we're going to have Game of Thrones cast and producers. Supposed to say something? What's going on? Are we answering questions? Hello, everybody. Okay, if we're taking photos, let me get out of the way. Hey, everyone. Congratulations. Hi. Um, so, two more seasons left. We have to wait a little bit longer for the next one, which is very disappointing. But um, what can you tell? What can we expect? What are you guys doing differently now that these seasons are going to be shorter as well? like a writer question, I think. I think that's a question that should be answered by one of the writers. Could you repeat the question? In, in its entirety? Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to do it in its entirety. Um, you have two more seasons left. They're going to be shorter. What can we expect to see from these two seasons? And what are you going to do that we haven't really had a chance to see yet? Is it going to be bigger now that it's only going to be seven or eight episodes? Give us some scoop. It will be bigger, and it will be better, <laughs> and it will also be worse, but mostly better. It's a question for Amelia. When did Jimmy Kimmel approach you for that opening segment? Well, well, like a week ago. There you go. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Congratulations on your win tonight for drama. And I had a specific question in regards to the writing win. Um, I know that you spend a great deal of time doing a lot of research, trying to get some historical accuracy uh, placed into each episode. I wanted to hear just a little about how you feel about winning for writing in the writing category. Uh, well, you know, it, it's, it's, I was talking to Miguel Sapochnik, our, the brilliant director who won the directing award for this episode, and, and maybe my favorite shot in the whole series so far is the one behind Kit when he's pulling his sword and the horses are charging at him. And the line in the script is something like, Jon Snow draws his sword and looks at the horses charging at him. You know, it, it, uh, a great director can make you look a lot better, and great actors make you seem a lot smarter. So we're just very lucky that we work with the people that we work with. I have nothing to add. David and DB, straight back on your right. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> back here on your right. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Right. Oh, there uh, anything you guys want to say to Frasier on this historical night? <laughs> Frasier! Uh, <laughs> Come on, come on. Uh, we love Frazier, and uh, he, had a, he had a long run, and we're sure that somebody will come along and take this from us. Uh, we just hope it doesn't happen until we're all dead. Until we're dead. Yeah. Do you guys think you're going to beat the SNL record before the show's over? How many do they have? 48, I think. Oh, that's a lot. I don't know. No. Maybe not. No. And even if we did, they'd just take it right back. They're not going anywhere. Yeah. So. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Can you talk a little bit about the biggest challenge you yeah. faced shooting this season? Um, I'm a mic runner for this room, but I can't ask questions here. For this season. Um, I'm sorry. The, the, the battle that Miguel Sapochnik directed, the Battle of the Bastards, was the, the biggest sequence we've ever shot. Um, using the most extras, the most crew members, uh, I think the most shooting days we ever had, the most special visual effects shots, uh, stunts. I mean, it was really a scene that, that encompassed every single department. And that, you know... We looked at so many battles on screen beforehand to try to get a sense of what worked and what didn't work. And 
I've never seen a better battle than the one that Miguel put together, um, which is a great credit to him, to Kid Harrington, to, to Awan, and, and everyone else who worked on it. Um, but that was, that was definitely the biggest challenge. You guys should ask Miguel some questions, because he, he had a lot to do with this stuff. Well, we're going to ask you all the same question. In one word, how would you explain or what would you say about this experience being on game? Go to Mike. We can't hear you. Go to Mike. Uh, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say my word. It's um, amazeballs is how I would sum it up. Thank you. Um, sexy. Horsey. Uh, for the producers down in front here, um, with the, the end of the show in sight, have you guys given any serious thought about doing any kind of a prequel series? You might want to ask George about that. Uh, I, I, it, it's a great world that George created. I think it's a very rich world, and, and I'm sure there will be other series set in Westeros. Um, but for us, this is it. So, so um, that's really a question for George. Sure. Well, I do have uh, thousands of pages of fake history of everything that led up to Game of Thrones. So there's a, um, there's a wealth of material there, and I'm still writing more. Uh, but uh, at the moment, we still have this show to finish, and I still have two books to finish. So uh, that's all speculation. <laughs> Hi, congratulations to all. Thank you. Wanted to ask you, if Donald Trump was a character in Game of Thrones, what would happen to him? <laughs> I think we have more taste than to cast him. <laughs> 